moment on Mars this morning, humans for the very first time flew a powered craft on another planet. At 12.33 p.m. local Mars time, 3.33 a.m. Eastern, the four-pound Ingenuity helicopter rose to a height of nearly 10 feet, hovered for about 30 seconds, rotated, then landed. That was it. The blades moving at five times the speed they would on Earth to make for the Martian thin atmosphere. Ingenuity's chief pilot entered the flight in his first ever planetary logbook. I have this logbook with me. It says uh, the nominal pilot's logbook for planets and moons because we're always thinking ahead here at NASA. The patch of Martian land from which the copter flew will now forever be known as Wright Brothers Field. Miguel San Martin now, he's worked with NASA's Mars rovers for decades and is a chief engineer at Jet Propulsion Lab Laboratory, or JPL, consultant on the Ingenuity mission as well. And Miguel, it was great seeing the crowds roar when the, when the thing took off this morning, but not really a piloted flight in the traditional sense. Could you explain that? Well, yeah, yeah. So first of all, thanks for having me in your program, Chef. Uh, the, uh, we are very excited about this, this uh, event that took place this morning. Uh, yes, I mean, there, it takes 16 minutes for the uh, command to travel from Earth to, to, to Mars. So it's, it would be impossible for, for a pilot here on the ground, uh, uh, you know, pilot in a remote control fashion. So the vehicle has to take care of itself. It has a full system. Uh, and it uh, takes a, 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 a series of commands from Earth that it, they are sent uh, ahead of time, and then he executes them, and then uh, it flies itself in, in, in an autonomous fashion. Sure, makes sense. Why is what happened this morning so important, important as first steps go? Well, it, it opens up a, a new tool for investigating, you know, for, for, for doing scientific research in, uh, in, on Mars or on other, or other planets, other bodies. And uh, it, it, it's, uh, one can, you know, compare this situation with the Sojourner rover that flew in 1997 with the Mars Pass Finder, where we demonstrated that a wheel rover could actually be very useful for scientific exploration. And that was the case that then we actually went back to Mars and then we went out with multiple rovers, right? We flew with Spirit, Opportunity, Curiosity, and Perseverance. So our hope is now, now that we've shown that you can actually uh, the fly helicopter on Mars that the, in the future proposed missions where uh, these helicopters will have scientific instruments and are going to be able to go to places where you could not go with a wheel vehicle and, or just serve as scouts. So there's a whole bunch of applications that you could do to explore Mars uh, in, in a better way. You know, beyond engineering and science, somehow they did this in the middle of a pandemic. What's the value of acknowledging that? Well, I, I, I think that's, that's fantastic. You know, I mean, I, it, it was for me very emotional to see this very young group of engineers that, you know, they, that they face not only the engineering problems, but all the challenges of doing this through, through, throughout a pandemic. And I, and I think that it shows a lot about us. It says a lot about us as a society that uh, we were able to do. Mm -hmm. We are able to do these things, right? Yeah. And we don't, you know, even, even the, it, with this very difficult challenging stuff that the, uh, the pandemic threw at us, we, uh, you know, we continue going, right? We, we, really, we don't stop. Really right? incredible. Miguel San Martin, can't thank you enough. Congratulations and all the good. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.